get started. Um, a couple minutes late here, but I know everyone will have questions for Brian at the end. So video, video strategy. So I want to make sure there's time at the end for questions. Um, Brian probably needs no introduction to a lot of you, oh. um, but <laughs> he's with Two Six Digital, um, following a three-year stint with an international tourism industry marketing agency. Um, he's been a part of the travel and tourism industry since '03, and was a longtime marketing director at Fargo Moorhead, um, where he pioneered a lot of their great marketing strategies over there. Um, his most well-known project was bringing the wood chipper back to Fargo. <laughs> it worked. Are you going to tell us about that today? No, but we okay. can talk about it over drinks tonight. Okay, all right. Yeah. Great. We can do that. That's a deal. So, um, he is well recognized as speaker at state, regional, and national conferences, and he's also known for his entertaining presentation style, so we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. I'll try. <laughs> he's a great asset to the development of any tourism organization marketing initiative due to his vast experience working directly with destinations and resorts, along with his vast knowledge of digital marketing. So welcome, Brian, and we really appreciate you speaking here today. Thank you. Again, for those of you who have seen me speak before, I don't understand why you clap, because I haven't said anything yet. Like, you guys should start with a resounding boo, or just at least sit there and wonder what this guy's going to do today. So, first I want to tell you a little bit about 26 Digital, because, uh, you know, we're a sponsor at this thing. And who are we? We're 100% digital agency, dedicated 100% to CVBs, DMOs, tourism. That is what we know. That's our bread and butter. Um, we're speaking to the right crowd today, which is fantastic. 43 years combined experience on our team. Uh, my partners in crime, Dave Serino and Grant Kenny, hanging out in the back there. They're going to hang out. So Cut, stop by our booth a little bit later, and uh, we'll hand out some goodies. Uh, we were founded, and we're right here in Pier, Michigan. So we're not based in California or based in Vancouver. Uh, we're, we're really uh, tight with the, with the Michigan crowd, and I think this is what my third or fourth MACVB now. Um, so I've been around a while. Dave's been around forever. He'll have a bronze statue built of him in some park someplace in one of these days, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, man, we do everything. Uh, we can come in at the ground level of your DMO, do some audits, do some strategy training, education. I'm the uh, uh, director of education for the company. Um, so man, we've got to train up some partners. We've got to you know, train up your staff, give us a call. And also, if you're just kind of looking for a way and you don't really know where to go, we can develop that strategy for you to get yourself on track and do some cool stuff. So today, it's video. I love video. So I gave a video speech back in 2011 at a pretty substantial conference. And it was really one of those things that I've always had a passion for coming out of radio and television broadcasting back in the early 2000s. Um, I always wanted to get my hands on those TV cameras. I wanted to get my hands on recording equipment. And I just always have been kind of an amateur videographer guy. So I gave a speech a few years ago about how GMOs can use video. Now this was in 11, so not that long ago. But back then, I brought literally a bag of equipment onto the stage and said, here guys, you need this, you need this, you need these microphones, you need these cameras. Now, we got it all right here in the palm of our hand. My god, when I was a marketing director at Fargo Moorhead, I had to take every photo myself. I had to hire videographers to come shoot. It cost thousands of dollars to do all of these things. Between this and people creating content online and social media, the marketing director at a CVB in today's world is the most cush job that you could ever possibly have because we have people doing our jobs for us. All we have to do is go out there, listen, and bring content in. Let's start with some stats. Six billion hours of video are watched monthly on YouTube. Wrap your head around that. I may have an Apple TV. Get one. The new one's coming out, and it's going to be awesome. 300 hours of video are uploaded every minute on YouTube. What are they posting? It's not all cat videos, because I think I've seen all of those. <laughs> By 2017, online video will make up 70% of consumer internet traffic. Right? We are consumption machines. Our consumers are, 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 are taking in all this video content at an astounding rate, and it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as the technology gets simpler and simpler and simpler. So in today's session, I'm going to show you some really simple ways that you can start creating some content, plant some creative ideas in your brain to take back to your GMO, and possibly, just possibly, start using your YouTube channel and your Facebook page for more than just uploading your commercials and using YouTube 
the second largest search engine in the world as a video uh, library that you never do anything with. Some more stats. 59% of viewers will watch a video to completion that's less than one minute long. We're killing ourselves making five minute destination showcase videos when all we really need is 15 seconds. 15 seconds of inspiration is going to drive people to your landing page or your website or whatever the heck it is. You don't need much. Don't overthink it, right? Finally, 92% of mobile video viewers share videos with others. How many have watched a video on your phone and text message it to your wife? Or shared it on Facebook or tweeted it out or did something like that? These mobile viewers share like crazy. Social media is home on mobile devices. I mean, seriously, we're walking down these things, we're all staring at our screens. And the cool thing is, it doesn't matter how old you are, right? It used to be the stereotype, all those young kids and their social media. It's not like that anymore. I'm seeing all the older generation here staring at their phones too. They might have Blackberries, but they're still looking at them. <laughs> so what can video do for you, right? Everybody wants to know what's in it for me, instead of just making videos. Video can boost email open rates by up to 19% and increase click-throughs by 300%. Is your email open rate dismal? Is it falling? Are you not seeing anything? Include some video in that. Drive some click-throughs, drive people to landing pages, and use video to entertain, which is what people want to do here. The average user spends 88% more time on a website that has video. That's a no-brainer, right? Get some video onto your website, and you know, please don't autoplay. That's my biggest pet peeve is when I hit a website and it autoplays, and I have my speakers up because I was just listening to ACDC like two seconds before and rocking out. Don't do that, but have the video there. And then using video on landing pages can increase conversion by 80%. Way more than your blocks of text. Way more than that single photo that you're trying to show off your property or show off your event or all these other, other little things. The biggest thing going on right now with video, and this is kind of, it's kind of trends, it's kind of tactical this session. I'm trying to throw a lot of stuff in here. I'm used to doing like three to five hour workshops. All right, so I got 55 minutes. So I'm trying to just kind of just throw the coal in the engine here and let's get going. Facebook and YouTube are in a battle right now, big time. Facebook's in the video game. Their numbers are freaking launching through the roof, right? We're seeing autoplay videos in the Facebook feeds. Um, People are getting it. They're uploading content natively to Facebook. Well, why are they doing that? Because Facebook doesn't really want those YouTube links on their network. Makes sense, right? They're competitors. Uh, you know, just the stats over the last year or so, YouTube links just are not getting the traction that, you know, that they used to. It used to be everybody was sharing those YouTube links. Now, if you want to have success with that video on Facebook, you've got to bring it Upload it directly to Facebook and start using it in their space. Stop sharing those links because they are not working anymore. You need dedicated strategies for YouTube and Facebook. These are two different animals. You cannot take that YouTube link and start sharing it on Facebook anymore. YouTube, it's search oriented, right? You go there, you're looking to like how to fix a zipper on my coat or you know, uh, maybe looking at a destination video. But mostly it's how-tos, tutorials, things like that that people are looking for. People are searching for it. It's not just delivered to you, like in a feed on Facebook, which is highly interactive and is from your friends and it's coming in and you can like it and share it, comment on it and get conversations going from this stuff. Two completely different approaches. YouTube, still extremely relevant. Of course, interaction is good, but it's the second largest search engine in the world behind Google that owns YouTube. Okay, so that's pretty substantial, you know, 4,000 pound gorilla in the room there. Still very good. Facebook, on the other hand, is the world's largest social network. Right? So you've got to think about being in both places. Dedicated strategies for these two very different places. Lower organic reach when you post something up on, on uh, YouTube. Right? Your subscribers, how often do people actually check their subscriber feed? Not very often. How many people actually have a channel that they manage? Not many. Not very many people. We go there, we search, and we consume content. Facebook. Just look at the stats, so again, over the last year, video is getting huge organic reach. Everybody was crying. Everybody was so sad. Oh, Facebook's screwing my company because they won't let all my fans see my content, right? You know, because it's just supposed to be a gift, you know, gift from the universe to be able to get that. But because of this little conflict between YouTube and Facebook, video is performing extremely well, so you need a strategy. YouTube, their growth, people are just viewing. They're growing very, very slow. Their numbers aren't crazy. They're still, like, their numbers are massive, don't get me wrong, but massive growth on the Facebook side. And they're going to give Facebook, or they're going to give YouTube a run for their money eventually. You know, we're going to have these two different platforms that we're going to have to deal with. 
search versus social. So if you create a video, you're going to put it on Facebook and you're going to put it on YouTube. You're not going to use YouTube to post to Facebook. You are going to upload natively, right? Yes. Yeah. So here's a great uh, you know, a little stat that I found, and it's video. It's going to get you 8.7% organic reach compared to the lowly status or the link that you're doing now. Photos, 3.7%. Right? Photos used to be king of the world. Links were king of the world. But now, videos, king of the world. YouTube, it's all about the SEO. It's all about the SEO. My goodness. So I've worked with dozens of DMOs, and I have yet to see a DMO do a great job with a YouTube channel. This is travel. These are fun experiences. We should have no shortage of content and, and, and things to share with people on YouTube. But we miss the whole point of YouTube, and that's SEO. How are people going to find this content? When you are uploading this content, you have to make sure that you're being smart with titles, descriptions, tags. Go through the settings. Keyword heavy, right? Maybe you should have your destination name and city and state in that title as well. That would be helpful. So if somebody's looking for something from Gaylord, right? Might be cool to have your name in the title. Descriptions. Man, tell people about what that video is, and most importantly, extend the story in that description. Do you have a landing page? Do you have a blog? Do you have some other resource that, can, that people could click on and go and learn more about this experience? Or are you just going to, once the video ends, that's it, right? Big theme of what we're doing at 2.6 right now is extending the story and integrating content and never letting that, that, that story stop. Because if I'm interested in going fly fishing on some river someplace in Michigan, I want to be able to I'll watch this video, I'm going to get totally excited about it, and then I want to go read a blog. Or I want to go look at the different providers, or the, the outfitters, places that I can go and do this. We have to enable that story. We need to push that story forward. The other thing that drives me nuts about video, man, is it's so much more than views. And I think moving forward, when you guys have videos, and you guys are starting to implement some of the things we're going to talk about today, Start looking at engagement as a piece of your video strategy. Start looking at, are people sharing this content? What about conversions? Do we have some links at the back end of this video and are people clicking on it? Are they clicking through? Um, you know, views, of course, are important, but there's so many different actions that we can make people do while viewing our videos. People seeing the in-video programming on YouTube, right? Button pops up at the end of the video, go and click it. Facebook's doing the same thing. Your video plays, there's a little link. Hey, okay, click to go and learn more. These are measurable things. It's way more than just views. And keep in mind, on Facebook, it can be a little bit deceiving. You'll see a ton of views coming through on Facebook, but they're only measuring, uh, or they measure a view at three seconds, and YouTube measures a view at 30 seconds. So it's kind of an apples and oranges com comparison. So you really have to look at the data to see if, people, if that content's actually resonating with people. But just you know, this is social. The other thing people are missing, just as a little side note, is that YouTube is a social network, right? People are leaving comments. People are sharing content. And I tell you what, so I have a YouTube channel that I just do a bunch of odd, oddball kind of stuff. When I get a YouTube comment, I'll drop whatever I'm doing, unless I'm flying a plane or something, which I don't do. But I'll go and I'll respond to that right away because the community is really, really tight there. When people interact with you on that network, it's like, oh my God, it's content creators and, and things like that. And I've developed some really great relationships uh, during that whole process. So typical content types, this is 90% of what I see at DMOs. Commercials on YouTube. A lot of times they might be just draft versions of commercials on YouTube. Maybe no narration. Maybe a really sick music bed, right? Everybody loves the, the music bed, you know, of, of, of B-rated music. Stop with the commercials, right? They have their place. You can have a playlist of commercials, but don't let that be your only upload, you know, every year or every two years or every five years when you're doing uh, content on, on the video side of things. This is what you want to do. And we've got a great example here from a you know, relatively small DMO, Lake Charles. And they are, you know, that, that, uh, that Cajun Crayola, you know, culture crawfish, all that good stuff down there. So what do they do? How-to videos, little tutorials, and I absolutely love this. We won't watch the whole thing. But they produce this in-house. They didn't really pay anybody a ton of money to produce this. They just got creative one day, and they looked at their analytics, and they were like, what are people searching for on our website? 
What kind of content could we create that people will do? Your analytics can tell you a lot of these things and answer these questions for you. So what do they do? How the heck do you eat crop? Now it's time to eat. Yeah, as a matter of fact. But this is where people find a lot of problems. Is how do you eat crawfish? Well, we're gonna we got a few people and we're gonna we're gonna see how they peel crawfish so that you know what to do the next time you're in a crawfish bowl. The best way to peel them is like uh, you store them and uh, <coughs> just <laughs> see you gotta get rid of this little doodad there. Break the tail. Bust this open from the side. Squeeze it out. And eat it. Best way to peel a <laughs> Best way to peel a crawfish, first of all, you take a drink. Then you want to kind of uh, grab the crawfish like this, twist the tail, suck. Get that juice going. And you take the first ring with your with your nail and just kind of break that first ring, slip it off, pinch the tail with your teeth, get the rest of the meat. Formative to somebody coming to town, you know, they can develop a lot of content around that, write a blog talking about these different ways and means of doing things. They could create Pinterest boards based on these different actions, right? Showing pictures of this guy, showing walking through all these things. Guys, just start thinking about for every piece of content that you create, look for five ways that you can either share it or you can extend on the story and tell more. This is the key. This is a huge trend that we're going to be talking about in the next session in the next hour. Here's another one, curated content and testimonials. So we got people coming into our destinations all the time, right? You see people posting Instagram photos. There's people, you know, maybe they post some YouTube videos, but mostly it's Instagram and hashtags are where people are, are uh, you know, really sharing their experiences. So Dave has a session after this where he's going to go through the entire case study for this little snippet, this little two minutes that I'm going to tell you about now. So I encourage you, if you're, you know, compelled or in interested in this, go see the, the deeper layers of the onion of what we did with that. But what we did is we were working with a client, Branson, and we noticed a lot of people were posting a lot of great photos. And we were like, well, these are freaking a wonderful grouping of photos. And this is just a, just a snapshot. There were probably, this guy probably posted a dozen photos during his family vacation in town. And we were like, this is fantastic. Well, we should, you know, you know, reshare these Instagram photos. And I was like, oh, wait, there's a bigger story here. This guy obviously had a good time. Let's give him a call, all right? Five minute phone call. In the comments, we commented out, said, hey, man, we love your photos. Any chance that you know, you'd let us talk, you know, we just wanna to talk to you for a little bit. So we did this with a number of people and surprisingly, people's vanity level on social media is extremely high. And they like to talk about themselves and they like to be um, recognized for their wonderful artistic skills. So instead of just sharing these photos, these photos actually ended up on a Pinterest board instead, right, that linked back to some of this other content. We talked to a guy named Skylar, and we did a whole series of these using these photos, you know, all these great photos, and a phone call, literally five minutes, we developed a piece of content. For us, the whole, For us, the whole thing is my wife's not a huge fisherman, fisherman, but when she goes out on Tani Como, it's game on. I mean, her, her goal is to catch a limit every time we go out. And obviously the scenery is, is about as good as it gets to, to just sit and fish. And catching or not, it's a good day. <laughs> this is very simple, simple stuff. I mean, it doesn't get more authentic than that, right? We're not trying too hard with this kind of content. We went out. We recognized somebody who took some awesome content about our destination. We hooked, we hooked up a call. We recorded a phone call. And this guy talked to me probably for 10 minutes. And every time he would say something, I'd be like, sound bite. Sound bite. Oh my God, I'm going to have like 10 videos when this thing is done, right? Like, and plus the guy, like people post content on social networks typically because they're having a good time right? It's like very, very, you know, very low percentage of the time is like, I'm miserable. You know, it's that social envy thing that we're always doing. So think about this. 
Of course, this got posted to Instagram, right? It goes to Pinterest, because you can do the videos there. Wow, we can put that on YouTube, too, and do a really nice, heavy SEO title on that and optimize that so we can get long, long tail views on that video. And we also have the YouTube videos. It goes to Facebook, got integrated into a blog. You know, touch points, right? Taking one piece of content and spreading it out throughout your ecosystem. You know what that ultimately does? It makes your job easier because you're not coming up with a new idea for every single channel that you're on or every website or blog that you're trying to deal with. All you're doing is elaborating on a single story. So really wrap your head around that. This is doable stuff and I'll share some of the apps that help us do this for like less than $10. Keep it simple. I think publicly correct, it's stupid, right? Keep it simple, stupid. That is not what my father would say. He would use a slightly different word. <laughs> but. Here's a video, and this is done years ago. I think this is 2013, if I remember right, by the Ypsilanti CVB. And they, you know, video was a pain. It was tough for them to come up with content, but they knew that they needed to generate content on at least a monthly basis. So what did they do? They went out and they found this app called One Second a Day. All right? Check it out. Simple. So simple. And you know what? You don't have to be a videographer to do this kind of stuff. Right? So they could, they could again, extend the story into a blog post. They could extend this in a million different ways. They could take each one of those snapshots, and those could be a little Instagram feature, or maybe a Vine video or something like that, right? Crazy good stuff. And this is all done with apps. My God, if I would have had an app store when I was a director of marketing uh, at Fargo, it would have been a game changer. So like, I really look at it today that there is no excuse for like not having and generating content. I mean, we, are, we need to become almost production companies. Media production companies is what we need to do because we need to tell these stories. We need to show people, entertain people, and it's all out there right now. So apps are your friend, all right? Apps are your friend. Go to the app store, go to the Android market. I mean, if you have, some, if you have a creative idea, it was like uh, when we were working on the Branson video where we just wanted to record a call. What I do? I was like, I don't know how to record a call. In radio, it was always really, really tough because you had to have an interface through the board and you had to do it and I was like, I don't even know how to wire that. I'm not an engineer. So what I do? I go to the app store and I type in record a phone call. Boom. Apps start coming up. Here's one second a day. It's an app. Three bucks. Three bucks. I think we can do that. PicFlow. That's the one that we used to put together the Instagram video. Throw in the slideshow, throw in some audio, create it. I think this, I pick, PicFlow is a free app. I don't think I even paid for it. Tape a call. This costs nine bucks, but it's freaking wonderful. I use it all the time. I always give people a heads up that I'm recording their phone call. Of course, wink, wink. <laughs> and finally, iTalk Recorder. Again, you know, uh, we have a lot of uh, great partners, very passionate partners, and I'm sure for anybody who's ever tried to shoot video before, the minute that you put a video camera in someone's face and ask them a question, what do they do? They freak out. They clam up, their personality goes away, and they might as well be getting their mugshot done at the police station. iTalk Recorder is one of those things that you can just walk up to one of your partners or whoever's running the train museum or whatever it is. Just be like, tell me about the train museum and just record their voice and then use one of these other apps to develop a piece of content using that. Right? We don't have to be video production teams. We just need to pull the individual pieces and use tools like this to put it together to make it all make sense. But you know, get rid of the anxiety and just record people's voices. Voices are a very powerful, powerful thing. So I figured I'd touch on some of these. Vine or Instagram? Hey, who's on Vine here? Right, 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 right. You're exactly right. Instagram. Who's on Instagram? Yeah. 
Guys, this is an easy conversation for us to be having. 300 million users here, 15 second videos, tons of filters, editing capabilities. Vine, there's 200 million users on it, but is it relevant for what we're trying to do right now? I don't really think so. The other thing is, is that we're already using Instagram. We're already on, man, the biggest problem that I see with a lot of GMOs is that they already got enough stuff to do. You know, their heart breaks and they, they, they break down in emotional fits when I'm like, oh, you should get on this new network. I don't want to do that to people, right? Let's use what we have and use it to its maximum ability. Plus it's 15 seconds and you saw what we did with the Branson video. Very simple stuff. It's not just Instagram. Instagram goes across all of your networks. So Instagram, it's a no-brainer. Periscope versus Meerkat. Who's familiar with these apps and what they are? Very few. Okay, relatively few. So th these are live streaming. You know, I can go out to a festival and start broadcasting live to all my Twitter followers, and they can come and watch, and they can ask me questions, and they can do all kinds of things. Well, here's the breakdown. Let's see if we can figure out which one maybe we should be using as tourist people or tourism folk here. 10 million posts versus 2 million posts. 10 million users versus 2 million users. 102 billion impressions versus 10 billion impressions. We're going to use Periscope if you really want to because you don't you just use a social network just because, yay, I can. You use it because you have a plan and you have some sort of purpose that you're trying to fulfill when you're doing it. So Periscope. Explore the world through someone else's eyes. Personally, when I browse Periscope, I'm not that blown away because there's a lot of like really shady, weird stuff going on on Periscope, right? But then Visit Savannah did something really, really cool. And I call it Gump Day, and I think they should call it Gump Day too, and they should do it every Wednesday, and it should be Gump Day. But Savannah has the bench, right, where Gump sat on the bench. And they have this guy who walks around, and he, he's Gump. You know, he sounds like Gump, he walks like Gump, he runs like Gump, right? He's kind of a fun little tourist attraction. They went out, <clears throat> and they went, and they said, hey, Forrest Gump's coming to Periscope. Follow Forrest through Chippewa Square tomorrow at 12 p.m. They went to Facebook, they told him, they tweeted it all out, they did all this stuff. And the next day, at noon, they went and they found Gump. Forrest hanging out, right? And it was awesome. People started commenting. They had quite a few followers coming in for the first time that they ever did this. And I mean, if you have a Forrest Gump bench in your destination, I think that's a remarkable experience that people are going to be kind of interested to like check out and get their photo taken at, right? Forrest Gump got a, got a, got a call from Lieutenant Dan while he was there. My wife would kill me. She says, I have the worst Forrest Gump impersonation ever. That's okay. I still like it. And he talked and he was like, oh, how's, how's your legs? You know, how's your magic legs? And like he, the guy just played up every little, you know, stereotype or every little, little factoid from the whole thing. And, and at the end of the broadcast, Forrest ran away. Right? Very, very fitting. Forrest had to run away and go, to, go meet somebody else. I don't remember what it was. Jen, eh? Yeah. <laughs> But they also used it as a great marketing opportunity for their destination. So at the end, they pop up and they're like, well, I guess Forrest, he just ran away because you can still kind of see him there. He's running away and they're like, well, I guess Forrest is done, right? What I would have loved to see them do is be like, you know what, we're going to find, uh, find Forrest again next, next Wednesday at noon and they'd keep this going, right? Get a regular schedule, talk to Forrest. Um, to my knowledge, they haven't done this again. And I think that it's a, just a, a golden opportunity for them to be able to um, really leverage this amazing piece. So if you're going to use Periscope, first of all, they just changed the app so you can now shoot horizontal. It was all vertical before, so they just changed it. It was probably within the last week or so they finally gave us that. Engage with the comments. I think it's the biggest thing. So like during the Forrest Gump uh, deal, people were like, hey, how's Jenny? You know, who, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then the, you know, Forrest would be fielding these questions. It was really, really cool, really engaging. Develop a regular strategy, like I said. Broadcast, think broadcast media when you're doing this stuff. Be regular, make people aware of it, make it something that people are expecting and they're actually looking forward to. There's a number of YouTube channels that I know every Friday I'm getting fresh uploads and I look forward to them. That at, you know, at the end of the day when I'm done with work and I come home, I know that I have like three or four channels I'm gonna go check the updates. You know, the, the ones that I don't really follow that close anymore are the ones who don't keep it regular and they're not 
feeding me content regularly. So have a schedule. Wi-Fi networks. Try to find Wi-Fi networks for sure. This thing will chew through your data, you know, at an amazing, amazing rate. So uh, find Wi-Fi networks um, or use hotspots, uh, something like that. Unless you have an unlimited plan, then go nuts. Emojis for the win in titles. The statistics, they, they, the data shows it, all right? You use emojis in the title of your Periscope stream, and people will watch it. I don't know why, but they do watch it. And they watch it at a, higher, at a higher rate than just saying, you know, gump day. You know, but then you need thumbs up, smile, tear, wink, whatever, all these different things. I mean, I don't even get it. <laughs> Make your account discoverable. That's another thing that people really, really miss, right? So it's kind of a Twitter-based deal. And they're like, oh, it's only viewable to my followers have to make this discoverable to everyone. And there's settings in your, in, in your um, account that you can change that. Show and tell. I've seen a number of Diabolos trying out Periscope, and they just kind of stand there and they show stuff. Super boring. There's no context. I have no idea what I'm looking at. Talk. Tell a story. Why is it relevant? Why am I looking at this? I mean, again, just take some cues from you know, the, the nightly news. And how do they tell a story? What are they talking about? You don't have to be a talking head on camera. By all means, if you're comfortable doing that, go for it. But if you could talk, that would really, really help out your streams. And this is the big one. Go into your settings and click the little thing to save your broadcast. This is the only, without this, I don't see the point in Periscope at all. Unless you're going to be super regular, you're going to be all over it. Because what you can do then is you can download your broadcasts and upload them to YouTube. You can upload them to Facebook. You can embed them into your blogs. You can do more with this piece of content once you can have it. Because they're only alive 24 hours on Periscope after you're done broadcasting. It's a pretty short window, you know? I like long tail. You know, that's what I really like. I like things to be out there a long time generating results for the long term, not, not these little splashes. <laughs> After this session, I want you guys to stop by and like pick up one of these from me because I think it's really going to help and it's going to resonate to the main point of what I'm trying to get across here. So yes, this is video, but video translates across your entire content marketing strategy and you have to think about it as just one piece. I have a video that's fantastic. What are you going to do with the video? The five rule says that for every piece of content that you create, you either share it or you integrate it in five different ways or extend the story, right? So when you have a, even if it's a photo, look for five ways that you can do something with that piece of content because the content is valuable, right? This can go all over the place. And if you just start thinking about it, we can do it. Drones. Who's messing around with drones? A little bit? Pretty cool, right? I think they're really cool. <laughs> all right, I think they're really, really cool. The thing that I love about them is the perspective. You don't see this everywhere. You, um, it's just a whole new vibe. Yes, get somebody who knows how to fly them. I would not recommend a CVB go and spend you know, two grand on a drone. Sure, if you, if you had somebody really fired up on your staff who was like all over it, then I don't want to block them from getting that awesome toy. But. Um, You'll get somebody who knows how to do it. A lot of these photographers in your destination are buying these drones now. Um, yeah, I've seen some great partnerships come in uh, for you know, really cost effectively. So work with your locals, the passion people in your community. They can help you out. I don't have much to say about it. But I tell you what, virtual tours and fams, I mean, if I was a sporting destination with tournament space and you know, soccer fields and stuff, yeah, heck yeah, I'd be getting a drone. And I'd be flying over my facilities the night after it got mowed. And it was looking awesome, absolutely. Or maybe there's a big tournament going on. Fly that drone over and get that footage. It is perspective and it is wow factor. I want to run through. So all of this doesn't make sense unless you are doing a few simple things when you are shooting video, okay? It doesn't matter whether or not you're broadcasting or whatever it is. Video basics, 101. It doesn't matter what you do, these are going to help you. This is going to help you take better photos and stuff too. Human tripod, all right? You can't be doing this, guys. 
So I, I'm a, I shoot tons of video, and I have so much content. Like back in the day when I didn't know what the heck I was doing, where I'd do this, and I would walk. This will make you vomit. <laughs> this is really hard to edit, and there is no stabilizer in the world, like a, like a, a piece of technology that's going to stabilize this. When you shoot video, mean it. You know, I don't know how many of you ever go to like the firing range, you know, but if I'm going to shoot the target, I'm not like, yeah, like I'm not doing that, no. I'm, you know, I'm dialed in. I'm going to go in and shoot that target. Um, so dial in, lock in, use your arms, use your back, and use, use your body as a tripod. You don't have to run around with a big tripod and, you know, geek stick running around doing that kind of stuff for monopods and stuff like that. Just be really, really, really aware of your body and hold the camera. Like, look at these things. They're super small. Motion, like, really affects them. It's not like we're using, you know, really fancy professional cameras. Human tripod. Landscape versus horizontal. Please, let's stop this. If we can rid the world of vertical video, I'll die a happy man. Audio. Bad audio ruins great video. You could have the greatest video in the world, and if you have horrible audio that maybe features wind snaps or um, you know, just background noise, horrible things, it could really, really ruin you. So I really encourage you to get a little $15 lavalier mic that you can plug into your phone. You can use it for interviews, you can use it to pick up environments, you can use it in a lot of ways, but it gives you a lot more control over these little, little pieces on, on this thing. Also, handheld recorder. I don't go anywhere without this. Yes, I have iTalk, but man, there's something special to having just a little handheld stereo recorder in your hand to walk up to people with. Like our phones do a good job of recording audio, but one of those is just a, it's another level, right? And they're a hundred bucks. Have one and go start talking to your partners, talk to your visitors, interview them, and get sound bites. Lighting, keep the light behind you. Please, every time I was just at home, and my, my family wanted to take a photo. And so they set up the tripod and a camera and stuff. And they set it up. And I was like, what are you doing? No. Nope. Rotate. We've got to rotate this photo. It's not going to work. Right? Keep the light behind you as the shooter. Right? You want your subject lit. Pay attention to that. It's a big deal. Keep it short. Look at these completion rates. 21 seconds has the best completion rate. 61 seconds. Good completion rate. Keep it under a minute on YouTube. If you have long form, if you're using long form, if you have half hour documentaries, make sure that you're creating short form to promote it and link to it in, in, in the different descriptions, right? So I'll have a 30 second teaser just like they might tease Heroes or The Walking Dead. They have a teaser. Long, or trailer. Yeah, yeah, trailer. That'd be a perfect term. Yes, you're right. Um, but keep it light and, and, and move in that way. So what's coming next? In my last, well, I got 10 minutes. This will be just about perfect. What's coming next? Some really, really, really cool stuff is coming next. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled about where we're going. How many have seen 360 video? Right? Mind-boggling, amazing stuff. For those of you who have not seen 360 video, let's just watch a quick little introduction to that. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> but it's pretty cool stuff. The other thing, who's heard of Oculus? Oh my God. So uh, we were at DMAI this year and there was an Oculus headset there that people got to try out. <coughs> people, we're never going to have to, well, no, we're, we'll have to leave our houses eventually. But this stuff is going to, I mean, if I buy stock or something, I, I would buy this because I really see that Everyone's going to have one of these in their house. It's coming. Uh, they're saying in November 2015 we'll be able to buy these. All right. So I'm a, I'm a kind of a, a gamer, an online gamer, so I'm really excited about it for that. I'm going to show you what it is. You just got to be patient, right? I'm building up. You ever hear a build up? <laughs> you look like a complete, you know, I'm a dummy. But I tell you what, man, this stuff, if you ever get the chance to put one of these on and try it, it will blow your mind. So I thought it would be fitting to show you guys a little bit of this, and we have just enough time to watch some of it. We won't watch it all, but if you're familiar with this YouTube series, these can be hilarious, and this Oculus one is very, very good.
amazing if you guys ever get the chance to try one of these. Do it, because you cannot do give it justice. So Google right now, go check it out. You can get it for free. This is just a taste test, and it actually just uses your smartphone right now. You lay your smartphone into the device, and um, it's called Google Cardboard. But it is coming, and it is amazing. If you're ever at a trade show, at a fair, or anything, try it. Um, Anyone that, that, that I've heard of that has experimented with this has just been blown away. It's a game changer for so many things. And, you know, tour, think about it, touring event space, touring uh, venues, touring attractions, doing things. I mean, you get cardboard and you get the app. I mean, you're, you're touring, you know, the shuttle launch facilities, you're touring the dinosaur museums, and you're doing all of these things, and it's going to click in your head about the ramifications that this has for our industry and tourism. This is amazing stuff that's on the way. That's all I've got. Dave's going to talk about a super campaign that we did, um, so head over to his room if you want. I'm talking some trends. It's going to be um, just kind of what I kind of, it's actually more of a rant. So if you like hearing me rant, um, you know, you can come to my session. That's cool. But I tell you what, I was blown away by the campaign that we did for Branson, and Dave's going to dive all into that in this next session. So thank you for coming. Talk to me later tonight. We'll, we'll do all this good stuff.